What is the significance of industrial corridors in India? Identifying industrial corridors explain their main characteristics. We are talking about significance of industrial corridor. Of course, from an exemption point of view, you have to talk only about the significance of industrial corridor. But uh, when you need to discuss that, uh, we really require to know what exactly industrial corridor, only then you can know the significance of this corridor. Identify industrial corridors and explain their main characteristics. Uh, and when we are going to be talking about identification of these industrial corridors, uh, then uh, that is uh, which are the distribution of it and the characteristics of not all of them, but all of them in collective manner. Coming to the first part. That is the concept of industrial corridor. An industrial corridor is basically a corridor comprising of a multi-modal transport services that would pass through the states as main artery. Freight cargo from industrial and uh, also some of these type of uh, industrial zones, uh, that is new industrial zones, uh, which are located up to a distance of 100 to 150 km on both the sides of the artery will be brought within the industrial corridor via the rail and road feeder links that will going to provide connectivity to the last of the kilometer last mile connectivity that is there is going to be a corridor and then there are going to be a lot of feeder roads that will go on to get themselves linked to this corridor this will lower the cost of logistics and enable firms to focus on their areas of core competence. Industrial corridor aims to create an area with a cluster of manufacturing or other industry. Such corridors are often created in areas that have pre-existing infrastructure such as boats, highways and railways. These modalities are arranged such that the arterial modality that is the artery that is the main part modality such as a highway or it is going to be a railroad eh, receives feeder that means eh, there is a main road and there goes going to be a lot of roads that are going to be getting themselves connected to it eh. that is going to be called as the feeder roads or the railways concerns eh, where eh, creating corridors include eh, correctly assessing eh, demand and eh, viability what are the transport options available in that place eh, and so on and so forth so, industrial corridors are essentially like an artery. One, it's like a track. This track it goes on to have a lot of linkages. So, every type of industry that goes on to be having a backward linkage, forward linkage. Backward linkage means uh, there is a, a firm that will go on to get certain things as raw material. Forward linkage means the firm that is produced something that finds its way to the market. So that is going to be complete in every possible manner with a good degree of a complementarity between the transportation forms. When we are going to be talking about transportation forms, that means rail, road, waterway, all of them are going to be working in congruence to aid and to help these type of corridor developments. So why is it that these type of industrial corridors are going to be significant? That is, uh, uh, these are going to be significant because of a lot of factors. It is generally going to be argued that benefits of industrial development should be read by, read by all the states and regions to avoid uh, any type of a developmental divide between uh, the different type of states. Uh, so every state needs to gain something out of it. The basic significance has been that, that is, uh, the establishment of uh, these industrial corridors in a scattered manner along the uh, industrial corridor across the length and state, uh, length and breadth of the state will prevent uh, distress migration, provide people with job opportunities uh, close to their dwelling place. The place where the people are going to live, that is where they are going to get a job. That's as simple as that. Second is that will also going to prevent concentration of industries in particular location which exploit the environment beyond its carrying capacity and this has been the basic reason associated with the environmental degradation in uh, the country. It will go on to get dispersed and uh, when it goes on to get dispersed it will not go on to damage the environment of the country to such an extent uh, that it goes on to become an irreversible decline. The third is as efficiency uh, creeps in India's industrial production structure due to improved transportation system and health, 
at labor force, the production cost will come down in any case. It has to come down because of a, the economies of a scale, economies of agglomeration. The lower cost will going to make Indian goods very, very competitive in the global market and it, because we are lowering the cost because of two factors. That is because of economies of scale and economies of agglomeration. And this will going to open avenues of export also. The fourth is the production of export sur surplus to generate employment opportunities will go to raise the per capita income and the GDP of the country also. Moreover, people will going to find job opportunities close to their homes and that will not go on to allow the migration and consequently a lot of urban problems that go on to take place that will be prevented. And last of it is going to be the spread effect of the industrial corridors in socio-economic terms are many and they can go on to be development of townships, eh, railways, eh, hospitals, eh, waterways, eh, everything. Yeah. It is on this line of industrial corridor that will go to find CPEC has also been developed eh, as or has been talked eh, about. The government is developing or planning to develop five industrial corridors in the country. These are one of them is eh, Dadri, Noida, Ghaziabad in West Bend region, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Manish Sarbhavar Investment Region in Haryana, Kurukshetra, Bhivadi, Nimrana Region in Rajasthan, Pitampur, Dhar, Mau Region in Madhya Pradesh, Ahmedabad, Dholera in Gujarat, and Shendra Bitinde Investment Region in Maharashtra, Digiport again in Maharashtra, and Jodhpur, Pali, Marwad Industrial Region in Rajasthan. In short, they have been the one. The most important of which is going to be Delhi, Mumbai Industrial Corridor Region. Now these industrial corridors say, have certain characteristics. Industrial corridors recognize the interdependence of various sectors of the economy and offer effective integration between industry and infrastructure which uh, can go on to lead to overall economic and social growth of the region. Basically these industrial corridors bank upon uh, the interdependence uh, of uh, the different uh, segments of the economy and how is it that uh, they can go on to be acting like a cascading system, they go on to be acting like an interdependent system uh, and uh, also how is it that uh, the different linkages, backward and forward linkages can go on to be so stuck in these corridors. Uh. Industrial corridors uh, include uh, our they constitute world class infrastructure such as uh, high speed transportation, both of them, that is rail and road network, uh, then uh, ports with the state of the art cargo handling equipment, uh, modern airports, uh, special economic zones, uh, that is the SEZs, uh, the industrial areas, logistics parks, uh, transshipment hubs, uh, knowledge parks, and whatnot. I mean, all of them are focused on a uh, feeding the industrial needs. The knowledge parks will go on to feed them with human resource, with manpower and of course there are going to be a lot of complementary infrastructure such as hospitals, townships, real estates and other infrastructure which enable the whole of the industrial corridor framework policy to function. Industrial corridors provide opportunities for private sector investment in the provision of uh, various infrastructure projects associated with uh, the use and utilization of these industrial opportunities. Uh. However, the successful utilization of opportunities that arises uh, from industrial corridors uh, depends on the availability of uh, transportation to a large extent and other infrastructure support system. Corridor approach for industrial development primarily takes advantage of the existence of proven, inherent and underutilized economic development and growth potential within the whole of this region that is going to be the sphere of influence, that is going to be the zone of influence, that is going to be the catchment area of this entire of the industrial corridor that is associated with it. Second characteristic is here. Apart from the development of the infrastructure, long term advantages to business and industry along the corridor include benefits arising from its smooth access to the industrial production units, decreased transportation and communication cost, 
an improved delivery system in fact this delivery system is going to be very very significant uh, because uh, such type of improved delivery time and reduction in the inventory cost can go on to go a long way a real real long way in uh, making it a uh, world class uh, the strategy of an industrial corridor is thus uh, intended to develop a sound industrial base served by world class competitive infrastructure as a prerequisite for attracting investment into export oriented industries as well as in manufacturing industrial corridors if they go on to take shape they will go on to be playing the most important role in transforming the economic landscape of india Thank you.